Hello and welcome to Slate on Slate. This is my wife Leslie. I am Keith. Today we're wearing theme shirts. She's wearing the party wagon. I'm wearing the party itself, Deadpool. And today's topic is going to be best romantic tropes. There you go. I forgot it again. I, that's <laughs> that's why she's smart and beautiful. First, I'm going to have to show my book, The House of Ribbons. It's going to be coming out very very soon. We're absolutely in the final stage. Final stages. Uh, we're about ready to. Have the book completely handed back and hit that publish button. So today we're going to talk about the best romantic tropes out there. So the first one is going to be the friends to lovers trope. This one's uh, it's it's an oldie but goodie. Uh, it's been around since you know the uh, Romeo and Juliet days. Uh, this is classic. It's self-explanatory. You're in a group, okay? You know somebody in that group. You guys have uh, gotten to know each other over a period of time and then you find yourself in a lover's embrace in some way, shape, or form. And uh, it's an oldie but goodie, and it works. And then we have the forced proximity one. This one is also an oldie but goodie. Uh, think of uh, if you've ever been at a wedding, bridesmaid to groom men. Is that a word? Yeah, the groom, there, there you go. Uh, <laughs> So, never been married, so I don't know, you know? <laughs> uh, or if, you know, like you're in a group of people and you're the new person to the group and then you're snowed in from an avalanche. So it's forced proximity. It's just like, hey, man, you're stuck on an island. I'm stuck on an island. And in some way, shape, or form, we fit together. So let's make this work. Boink. So the next one is the uh, enemies to lovers trope. This one's, uh, for me at least, fam fairly obvious. So, but I'll point it out. It was like, you ever been in a group of people you just hate them out of somebody? <laughs> I mean, you just, ugh. And then one day you wake up and you're like, wow, you're really good in bed. <laughs> it's just one of those things that happens. Like, you both dislike each other. It's a mutual dislike. And then you find out that you have a commonality, and that commonality branches out into a tree of commonalities. Friends to lovers. Then you have the uh, fake relationship. Yep, fake relationships are uh, also good. You know, like uh, boss only promotes people who are married, getting married, stable relationship because relationships sometimes speak of stability, blah, 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 blah. So uh, you get a friend or a friend of a friend to fake uh, your relationship. Uh, or it, maybe you're throwing off the scent of uh, whatever. You know, you got an ex-girlfriend chasing on you. And you don't want no business with that. Or X, period, because, you know, i got to be PC nowadays. And uh, so an ex-human being. Ex-human being? Wouldn't they be dead if they were ex-human being? I don't know. So you're, they're your ex. Well, most exes you want to be dead anyway. It's not me, though, because I don't hold any animosity. You know? uh, hey, if you're not in a relationship with me anymore, I either messed up or you messed up. Either way, we're having our best life now, and I wish all the best to my exes. Uh, but... Man, I got off track quick. Uh, you know, uh, you just, you're thrown off the scent. You know, you're like, hey, Cindy, you want to pretend to like me on Facebook since you're single? Because my, my ex is cray cray. So the next one is um, Marriage of Convenience. This one's uh, an oldie but a goodie. You find it in a lot of the old historical pieces. Think of the kings and queens when they were just princes and princesses, uh, joining of two houses. That's a marriage of convenience. Uh, they still practice it in some parts of the world right now where there's no real love involved or sometimes there's no love involved and then you know, if you're lucky you know love will rear its ugly head then you have your accidental pregnancies you mean okay yeah yeah so you got um then you got your accidental pregnancies where the, the you know you, two people are just you know boinking it out <laughs> And then, uh, uh, you know, she's like, surprise. And then you take that storyline in any way you want. The next one we have is our second chance romance. Oh, yeah. This is, this is a good one because it can be written in so many different ways. Uh, you know, and uh, just I'll, I'll throw this out to you, the viewer. Uh, how many times have you ended a relationship in a weird way where years later you're like, I don't know how we stopped dating. Uh, and then you find that you have your original commonality, but now you've grown as a person and your commonality has branched out like a, a tree even better. Uh, so 
you have that. Sometimes you just break up because you guys don't want to be together and you find out later on that you want to be. And, or sometimes it's work, you know, transfer and in the military, uh, like my wife and I, you know, you, you know, you're duty stationed in Germany, she's duty stationed in Alabama, and then, mm -hmm. you know, you know the, it could fall by the wayside. Then you have your best friend's brother slash sister relationship, where you date your best friend's brother or sister. Yeah, all right, so that, that I don't write that, or anything about that as of yet, but that can pre present itself with a lot of fun situations and or problems like you know like i'm gonna use my buddy my buddy jeremy has this incredibly beautiful sister and uh uh and him and i had talked about this in the last year or so when i was talking to jeremy i said hey man i never once hit on your sister once you know that and uh, he goes yeah why and i said uh because we're friends and i didn't want any complications with that because not every relationship when we we're that young uh goes on and he paid me one of the biggest compliments I've been paid by a friend in a long time. He goes, I would have loved having you as a brother-in-law. You know, and that's because him and I have been friends for, oh, Jesus Christ, probably 30 years now. And uh, uh, so sometimes these work out, but sometimes you know, you, if I, me and a girl break up, uh, my mate and I might fall out too because, you know I mean? Your buddy's gonna learn your dirty secrets if, if his sister is just running off at the mouth that, you know, I, I like to wear a dress and high heels. And your workplace romance. This is where you fall in love with your coworker. Oh, that's when you're just trying to shoot yourself right in the face. Yeah, that's, that's a, hey, I think it's a good idea. And the funny thing is, a lot of romances around the world happen for that because it falls into, did I cut you off? I didn't mean to cut you off. No. Okay. Uh, it falls into commonality. Commonality of the place that you're in. Uh, which, it can go terribly wrong. We in the military do not like people dating each other in the same unit uh, uh, simply because you got to show up at formation every day looking at each other in the face and nobody wants to hear your drama. I don't want to hear any of that bullshit. I don't like it on Facebook, man. I'll delete your ass quick if I have to hear your drama. So then you have your royals, uh, celebrities, and billionaires. So this is the... the uh, rich people. Yeah, so this is, um, this is where I'm going to give you my personal take on that. Because as we all know, I'm the king of everything. Uh, but remember, I'm You're so humble. I'm humble. That's You're the so humble. But listen, I wasn't the person to put me in charge of being king of the absolute multiverse. It just fell on me one day. And heavy <laughs> is the head that wears the crown. So speaking from that point of view, uh, I, I just I can't relate to anybody anytime. And it just pisses me off that you guys can't really relate to me because I am fucking great. <laughs> I, you know, two so and a half, by now, this video probably already has two and a half billion likes and four and a half billion followers. So that means half of you, less than half of you, I'm not good at math, I don't need to be, uh, need to get on the ball and start slamming that like button. Uh, and you know what? Create a couple of burner accounts and slam the like button on that too, simply because you miss it the first time, now you owe me double. And I'm just trying to keep it real with you, king of the universe. I don't know, I got off on track. Oops, sorry. I got off on Damn, got me right in the funny bone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> King of the universe shouldn't be laughing because of my funny bone. What was the question again? This is the rich people. Problem. Yeah, man, they got their own problems. I don't fucking, I don't know. I, you could give me a billion dollars tomorrow. I'm not going to change. I'm not going to put on the suit and tie. This is more about the, like, Fifty Shades of Grey type. Yeah, I was going to get to that. Relationships. <laughs> in rehearsal. Remember <laughs> rehearsal? This is why we do rehearsals. Yeah, all right, listen. Fifty Shades of Grey could never have been written by a man, in my opinion. Okay? Because, and there's a famous meme about it. If Fifty Shades of Grey was written from the point of view of a guy who didn't have money like that, and that guy had Bruce Wayne money, and if it was just like a horny guy in a trailer, that book would have bombed. What is there more of? Horny people in apartments, houses, trailers? Or billionaires that go, I can do anything anytime I want, and I have sexual proclivities that range in this net. That. But we're never going to have a three-way in three books. You're going to tell me that guy had that much money, and he didn't bring a string of men, women, and the occasional giraffe into it? I don't care what you say. Giraffes are sexy! Okay, then the next one is the mistaken identity slash amnesia. Oh, yeah, I love that. I get hit in the head sometimes, and I can't recognize my own face. And then sometimes I... Wait, are we talking about two different things? Oh, okay. 
this is where the um the romance it's kind of like a second chance romance it's um where the one of the favorite person yeah i don't write about get, that so um, i'm gonna be honest i'm not even gonna try to bullshit my way through that answer okay uh, you let me finish yeah. and tell Ooh, them. Whoops. thank you this is where that person gets amnesia and doesn't know what's going on and then you have the kind of the second chance to fall back in so i know you but like you don't 50 remember shades me? of 50 first dates 50 first dates so the last one we have is the like runaway bride that slash best man in a wedding planner so this is where the somebody at a wedding falls in love with somebody else we mean like the bride fall in love with the caterer or something like that mm -hmm. Ugh, I, don't, I don't or the wedding planner falls in love with the best man or something like that type of thing yeah i don't uh, again i don't it's more of a movie yeah, thing. i'm doing sci-fi fantasy slash romance and dark sci-fi fantasy uh so i'm not doing any of that so i'm not even going to try to bullshit you on that uh just so that if is... you can write it cool i just give me some tips i don't know Give me some tips in the comments right there, you know? That is all we have for you today. So if you like us, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button below. Um, and if you want to find out more updates on the book or future videos, go ahead and hit, go ahead and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr. As always, I am greatly appreciated. We are uh, greatly appreciative of uh, all the likes and subscribes and the comments we get. And that is all we have for you today. See Bye. You.